Hey guys, we are back with another brush in a tutorial. Today we are going to be working on our Pear Dare template. You can see there are two columns and you are kind of crossing and, and pairing them together. But before we get into that, we are going to come up here and make sure it does not say login. If it does, log in with either your email and password or make a new account. Either way, it's super easy. We just want to make sure that you can save your work once we get started here. So now that I am logged in, I am going to come down and click this amazing little create button here. And then we can see I pop into our classic editor. We've got two separate menus here. So on the left side, we've got our more visual audio side and then on the right we have more of our verbal side. We're going to start over on the visual side and there's two ways you can navigate to go to your avatar. One is just by clicking this little avatar button here, super duper easy. The other is just as easy. Over on the right side you can also click the avatar and this will pop up. You can see right away there are your avatars right on top and those are my avatars. These are all avatars that I have personally uploaded in here and so they are actually available. You can see them in our Bolt Squad upload. So I will show you that in just a second. So I'm allowed to choose any of my avatars or I can choose any of the amazing humans that we have. We've got human avatars, we have animal avatars, we've got objects and we've got partner avatars and things like that. But Bolt Squad uploads are the things that you and I upload. So all of us game makers, when we upload a new thing, we can choose to make it private or public, and then it will either show up here or not if you've decided to make it private. So I can actually use these. These are things that other people have uploaded and I can use them in my game. So let's look at what that looks like. When I come up here and I go to upload avatar, I can just follow these instructions here, 256 by 256 pixels, PNG JPEG, five megabytes is the max file size, and then I can click on add files and it will pop up a screen on my computer where I can upload a brand new avatar here. Let's choose this guy and then he will pop up in here. Now I have cut him out through Canva, so you're welcome to cut them out through a different software or when you just upload a JPEG, it will fill in this whole screen and that's okay because it looks really nice too. Then I'm going to go through title, tags, and privacy settings. So once I'm here, I'm gonna call this guy Kitty Cat. That's not how you spell kitty. Kitty Cat. And then I'm gonna come here to our tags. Now the tags are going to be what allow me to actually search for your avatar. So I'm going to add words like cat, kitty, kitten, um, pet maybe, uh, fuzzy, cute, ooh things like that. Now I want to make sure that this turns pink. These tags turn pink as soon as I'm ready. So if I wanted to say kitty cat, I could do that and have two two words. I'm just going to make sure that I click enter because I can do as many as I want, but unless I click enter, it will not go into the system. So we're going to make sure that it goes into the system. I really don't need kitty cat because I have both kitty and cat. If they do either of these, this cat will pop up. So Let's say I don't want to have other people use this guy in their games because if I leave this public, other people will be able to use him. So if I decide I want to keep it private, I will be the only one who sees this, I will be the only one who can put this in a game, and it's private, right? I'm gonna keep mine public because I think he's really cute, and then we will go ahead and upload right here. Once we've uploaded, it will come up with this little green banner that says asset uploaded. That's how I know it has been uploaded. And then I can go back into my avatars right here, view more, and there he is. He's absolutely stellar. So one more time, we're gonna go back to our Bolt Squad uploads and you'll see that there he is. He is hanging out uh, with his sunglasses on. <laughs> All right, now that we've gotten our avatar down, we're going to change our background, which is that little circus scene back there. So I'm going to choose something fairly uh, dark just because I like to make sure that my letters will contrast with the background. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So I'm going to find something fairly purple. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This was really, really nice. So let's go ahead and we've add that. You can see as I change things over here, they do change on the other side. My avatar has been changed, my background has been changed, this really nice like fireworks scene. So we're going to have those two things. Now collectibles, we're actually going to skip for just a second because I wanna show you how to do this on the right side. But you are welcome to upload your own collectibles exactly like your avatar as well as your background too. You can upload your own backgrounds, just follow these instructions and then go through the same 
steps that we did with our avatar. So let's skip collectibles for just a second. We're going into our music. So you can decide if you want to just click a little purple triangle to listen in and see what each of these songs are. Or you can decide, well, and you can decide to choose one once you found a song that you like. You can choose this little pink plus button and you'll see it turns into a check mark. That's how I know it's in my game. If I don't want any music at all, I can go ahead and just click this little no music button and you can see all of these have gone dark. Or if I do not click anything, so let's say I don't want music but I don't click this, all of this, this is going to upload a default song. So if you really want no music, make sure you check no music. And if you want to upload your own music, you can do that as well. So follow the instructions one more time, add your music, title tags, and privacy settings, just like we did for our avatar. And then you can upload and you will be able to put your own music in. So now we're coming over to the right side. You can see immediately that I've got select question and it's only got one question. If I want more than one level here, I'm actually going to add a question. But before I do that, I'm gonna come down into introduction because my introduction and my question are gonna be the same across multiple levels. And when I add a question or a level, it duplicates the first one. So what we're doing here, the game is gonna be called Hue Clue and we have different colors. We'll have blue, red, and yellow written out on this side and then some sort of a collectible in that color on this side and the player will have to connect them. So I'm going to tell them in their introduction what they need to do which is match colors to their corresponding um, words exclamation point and then we can do something like a call to action so I'm going to say here if you want to make fun games like this, uh, head to brishna.io, right? A cool little call to action. This is something that they will 100,000% see before they go into the game. They will click play, this introduction pops up, and then the game pops up after. The question is going to show up right here across this green bar, and that's gonna be telling them what to do. So I'm gonna say match colors to their corresponding words. And that's it. We want this to be fairly short because it's going to be right up here. You can also do other things. You can tell, you can say people like, um, I don't know, match the, match the uh, names of important figures to the years that they were born, right? So this doesn't have to be an actual like uh, statement. It can be a question. You can do a couple of things with this. This mix button right here is going to be toggled on for me, but if you don't want it toggled on, that's fine. You can just click it and it will toggle right off. This will actually make it so that your, uh your avatars, or not your avatars, your assets rather, will switch up every single time you play. So one time it might be red, blue, yellow, the next time it might be blue, red, yellow, or something like that, right? If you don't click that on, it will be the same every single time, and you know, that's okay too. So over here, we can add two options. We can either add text or add an asset. So if you do have something here, this actually got toggled off when I clicked toggled off here with the mix, but you'll notice if there's something here, there will be a little red X mark that you can choose. Once you click that red X mark, it will pop up to be like this. It will refresh and you'll be able to add either a text or an asset. Now I am going to add text here. I want on the left side to be actual text. So I will go to text and I will write blue, add text. And then on the other side, I'm going to add an asset and it pops us over into those collectibles. Now we have a nice red, blue and yellow kind of thing here. So we're just gonna use those. I'm gonna have this really nice blue diamond. And then on the left for option two, we will go with red and then add our asset. Again, it brings us over to that left side. We can pick cherries nice and red. One more time, going back to the right, and we can go yellow. And then add our asset, bring it over here to the lemon, and then that's yellow. So now if I want to add more, this is it. We can only do three uh, panels per level. This is why we're gonna add another level. So I'm gonna say add question, and now it's question one and question two, and I can toggle back and forth between the two. But what's extra cool is I could go ahead if I wanted to and change this avatar. Maybe I will change the background as well. Let's go ahead and grab, I don't know, something interesting. Let's do a space background. 
And then, uh, so then I can flip back into my question one and nothing will have changed. So I can actually uh, adjust this and customize this as much as I want in between questions. Then I can come down and I can see the introduction and the question are already filled in for me because I did wait to add the question until after I did these. Now, of course, it only takes a couple of seconds, so you know it doesn't take that much time, but it saves you a little bit. And then this is perfect. You can see right here my little uh, X button. I'm going to go ahead and click out of all of these so that I can refresh and have clear assets. Come here, there it is, at X and X, okay. So now we're going to do add text. We're going to do orange. Oops. Add the text, add an asset over here. We're going to, let's see some food. I bet there's orange food. Beautiful. We've got a beautiful pumpkin coming back over, adding text. We've got purple. Boop. And then we can add our asset. I believe there's a purple gem right here. Really nice. And then finally, we've got our green. Oh my goodness, I can spell. Oh my goodness. Add text, and then I can add my asset here. We're going to go for a green diamond. I wonder if there's one of each color. I don't think there is. Nope, we're gonna just keep it like that. Okay, so now I've got all of my questions filled in. I've got my collectibles in. The final thing we need to do is add our titles, tags, and a couple of things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Hue Clue. And then we're going to add a bunch of tags. So these tags are both for other people to search as our search function gets more uh, it gets improved. We, you will be able to actually search for these tags, but in the meantime, these are going to be for us, the dev team, this and the category right here are going to be for us to be able to put your games in the right spots to be able to showcase them to other people. So for this, I would maybe say colors, um, yes, colors, matching, um, learning, education, uh, maybe I say um, preschool because that's sort of a preschool thing although the word corresponding might need to be changed but stuff like that you kind of get the point and exactly the same on the tags in our avatar I can type as much as I want but unless I click enter it won't go into the system and then I can backspace same idea here we're just going to choose education because we're going to choose what we think is the most appropriate category and then that will help us to put it in the correct spot Finally, we have our collect player email. We will toggle this on because it's pretty cool. This will have people actually enter their email before they play the game. They do not need an account. They don't need to sign up for anything. They just need to input their email and you will be able to actually collect this in your dashboard. So let's say you're a, a business owner who wants to collect emails to follow up with leads. Let's say you're a teacher maybe and you wanna see who's been playing the games. This is a really cool option for you to toggle on. Now the description is neat. So I'm actually going to grab the introduction here and we're gonna go back over to the description and input this. So the introduction will be seen by your player. Before they play, that will pop up. The description here is actually going to be in an about section that is separate and they have to go into. So you can format this a little bit better, but you also wanna make sure that if there's anything that the player needs to know, that goes into the introduction. Finally, one of our favorite features here is our right to left text. So any language, you can use any language to make a game, which I think is really, really cool. So you can use Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, Pashto, Urdu, anything like that. If your script is right to left, you toggle this bad boy on and then your text will make sense. Now, of course, if you're using English or something that is a left to right script, you don't want to toggle that on because it won't make any sense. And then I can go all the way up here to the top and I can click publish. Once I've published, I know my game is live and I've got a couple of options here. I can either copy the URL and send that bad boy out. That can go anywhere that you can put a link. You can put your URL, so that's Instagram stories or Twitter or WhatsApp or texting people. You can go ahead and do that. This will open up a new tab or a new window. If you want to embed this directly into your website so that it stays in the website and people are playing on the website, they're not being taken anywhere else, you can 
copy and paste this directly into your HTML code and that will be embedded into your website. Finally, of course, there is the beautiful pink play button that we are going to click so that it comes into a new tab and we can start to play the game. The nice thing about this, of course, we are going to play our game before we send it out to try and find any uh, problems if we have any errors in there. But also what's nice is you can just click back and forth between this because it does open into a new spot. Uh, so if you have any errors while you're playing, you can just click right back in here and uh, fix them as you're going. So now this is that email ID, so I'm going to type in my email, a very old email, oh my goodness, and click enter. It will say either email or email and name. Mine, I've done this a couple of times, so the name is, is gone. It knows that I'm Jack. So now I'm going to go to about. This is that thing that we had. You know, if you need help, contact Mrs. Smith or go to chapter two. You can see that it is a little bit more formatted so that I've got spaces in between each word or each uh, line, stuff like that. But again, the player does not have to play or to check this out before they play. Once I click play, I will choose between self paced and timed. Then I can choose my difficulty level. And then there's that level intro. It will pop up before the person plays, but it is not formatable. So you wanna make sure you're aware of that as you're making your game. Then I can go ahead and click play. And there it is. So there's my beautiful uh, purple background. I've got my adorable little avatar right here. I've got my blue goes to the blue diamond, yellow goes to the yellow lemon, red goes to the cherries, and then I win. And it shows you the answer again. So it's really good for feedback. Then let's go on to level two. We've got our three, we've got orange, purple, and um, green popping up. Once again, you have something for each and every level. So let's say I wanted to add like, um, red, blue, and yellow are primary colors, and then green, purple, and orange are secondary colors. Things like that, those can all be included in your intro here. And then of course I've got my pumpkin, I've got my green, and I've got my purple. Before I click that, notice that our avatar has changed and our background has changed. It can be as customized as you want in between different levels, and then I can click and there's my answer. And that's it. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and come all the way down to the bottom of our website and book a live demo session with us. It is completely free. Or of course, you can send info at gamingfordev.com. Any of your questions, we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. It is pretty quick. And I hope you have fun. Enjoy your Pear Dare template. And thanks for being game.